and welcome back to a, another Craig and Dave Unscripted. So this is another one of our videos uh, on our Mission Encodable uh, team that we're paired up with. So let's bring them straight back. So here is Howie and Anna from uh, Mission Encodable. Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> so put you on the spot there. Um, now, if you don't know who Mission Encodable are or Howie and Anna are, um, you know, did a lovely introduction video last week so pop back and see that one but effectively two entrepreneur uh, a-level students who have created a great coding platform and we're helping them promote this here now last week uh, we were going over what we call level one which was an introduction to inputs outputs and structured programs uh, dave what are harry and anna going to be touching about today yeah, so uh, level two is all about learning to add logic to your programs using the concept of selection. And uh, I won't say any more than that. I'm going to hand straight over to Harry and Anna. Guide us through it. Well, thank you very much. So, yeah, as Dave just said, level two is where we start to add logic to programs, which is known as selection. So at this point in level one, hopefully students will have seen how to do print statements, inputs, variables, all really good stuff and all really important but i think personally level two is where it starts to get a bit interesting you can start to really create some more interesting programs by essentially allowing them to change what they do based on what the user inputs so it's a real pathway to start making some games and some more interesting projects so i'll hand over to anna now who i think is going to screen share and um, i'll let her tell you what is specifically in the level yeah, all right. So um, all of our levels, um, when you click onto them, you get a bit of a page like this. Um, you get a kind of overview of what will happen in the level. And then you can see what we like to call the capstone project, which is the project that you'll complete at the end of the level, which kind of tests your knowledge, find out what you're good at, find out what you're not so good at. And in this um, level, it, we call it at your age. So um, as you can see here, it asks the user to enter their age and responds by telling them what a famous person did at their age. Um, so we can just test it out here. I'll enter 16 because I'm 16. And you can see that at age 16, Lana Del Rey released her first album. And there are lots of different facts like that for lots of different ages. And it encourages students to do some research, but also it's a really good way to um, test all about selection, which is what they do in this level. And then you can see what you'll learn um more about selection and then you say i want to start the level and then we take you through a series of steps so um you start off with a bit about relational and comparison operators and then you move on to if statements and we go through this really thoroughly we show students the syntax and then we start to look at some examples some nice simple examples and then obviously moving on to more complex things in the projects. So you'll start with if statements, then you move on to else statements. And then your first project is called voting age. And you, this is just a program to work out if the user can vote. Um, so it's quite simple, but it's quite nice. It just gets you straight away into a um, real life scenario. And um, it's just a nice project to do just to show that you can actually do something with what you've learned, which I think is always nice. Then you move on to slightly more complex things, elif statements, Boolean operators. And we just take you through all of these things step by step. So your knowledge is really comprehensive and um, covers everything you need to know. So, sorry to interrupt, I'm promising not to interrupt too much, but I love the way this builds. I think we said this last week, you know, start off with the, the simplest select, just an if statement. Now we're adding an else. Now we'll give you a little project. Now we'll do the elif. And I can see where it's going because I watched you scrolling down. It's, you know, the, the, the thought process is great. It's what sort of four or five different variations on selection. And uh, I just like the way it builds with little programs interspersed all the way through. Yeah, yeah and the links really on the left-hand yeah. side as well, they provide that um, quick link back. So if mm -hmm. you're later doing, um, for example, this project here, Height Checker, and you can't remember the syntax for the else part, then you can click on else and it will go straight back to, uh, to that example. So using that navigation on the left as a bit of a handy reference at the same time is really great. Yeah, exactly. And we've thought really hard about how to um, kind of structure it so that it's kind of taking small but progressive steps and then interspersed with projects to kind of test your knowledge. Um, 
And then you move on to um, match case statements, uh, which are new in Python. So, or quite new in Python, just trying to stay up to date. Um, and then you move on to Treasure Island, which is actually a really fun project, I think. It's really fun to make because it's a choose your own adventure kind of game. And oh, I love those from my yeah. youth. Back in, the days, back in the days when computer games didn't have graphics. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, don't, don't get him off on this. Keep, keep going, Anna. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really nice one. And Harry and I had a lot of fun making ours. So um, hopefully students will also have a lot of fun making theirs. And then finally, right at the end of the level, you've got your capstone project, what they did at your age. And that's the same that we saw um, on the introduction page to this level. Um, so we just, it doesn't have much support behind it. Unlike most of our other projects, which walk students through it step by step, the capstone project is more independent. So you can really see what you need to learn more of, what you are really good at, um, just testing your knowledge. Um, so we tell you what you need to do and we give you a little bit of an outline to help you structure your program. And then for this one, we give you a bit of information, some facts, because it can be difficult to find these kinds of things. Um, we tell you the requirements, give you a sample output, and then we tell you to evaluate your program just to check that it works for a selection of things. Mm. And then once you've done that, you've reached the end of level two, and you're ready to progress to level three if you've completed it. If not, we recommend that you go back and go over it. And then you can say, I finished the level. And then finally, you can get your own personalized certificate, which we really like. Um, so you enter your name, my name's Anna, and then you download it. And hopefully this works. Um, and then you can download this certificate um, it also has the Time to Code logo on it. So if you're doing that, you can also download the certificate um, and it just has the date, your name, and a little bit that your teacher can sign if you so wish. Um, so that's a really nice way to end the level and it gives you a really nice um, feeling of achievement, I think. Um, and that's really all from me. I don't know if Harry, you have anything well, I to think add. There's uh, th thanks, Anna. I'd just um, like to pick up a, a couple of uh, teaching bits um, in there. Um, <clears throat> so we've already talked about the left hand side being a bit of an index and a handy reference, which is really useful to students when they're completing projects and they need some syntax reminders and those kinds of things. But also, you said that you give the students some data that they can use in their program. And actually, this is, um, I don't know if you've just stumbled across this by chance, um, but this is a, a key teaching technique that you need to focus in lessons on what's important. And what's important here is the syntax and the logic and the purpose of the selection statements, not the data. The data is just to give you some substance for the program and to make what you're doing a little bit more fun. Um, so it's important to have the data. Otherwise, what will happen is students will spend ages and ages and ages researching interesting facts, getting completely sidetracked, and they'll lose the learning objective. So I really like the fact that, uh, that you've done that. Of course, it doesn't stop the teacher then saying, right, well, you've done the basics. This is all working. Now go and find out some more facts. But the point is, that that bit that's least important happens at the end rather than at the beginning. And that's really strong. Yeah, and sorry. actually, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. You go most of our projects have an extension as well, which is a bit like that, Dave. It's like um, kind of once you've done the bare minimum of for the project, you can then take it a bit further, make it a bit more unique and a bit more exciting. So that's quite nice that um, you can just make your programs more personalized, but first you work on the syntax you work on the techniques and then you develop it further one thing i really liked was um when you were going through this just scroll down a bit for me it's, it's to the bottom i'll remember it when i see it um keep going yeah that project treasure island just click on the project uh, treasure yeah. island link on the left um and then yeah scroll down a bit further where we see the ascii art there so, yeah it, it's it's this um and we went through this in a lot more detail in the kind of introductory video last week, so I won't go over it again. But one of the things we've made sure to do with Time to Code and Mission Encodable is to completely align these and think about the learning journey. So there, 
we've got some simple ASCII art. I mean, it adds a, a fun, you know, a fun intro to it. We don't need to go over it because in level one, I believe you showed us last week when you were doing inputs and outputs, one of the projects was ASCII art. And of course, it just ties that back in. It's like, well, you already know how to do that. It was actually something you learned back in level one when you were doing outputs. We actually did a little ASCII art uh, sort of mini project that you had to do. And here's that skill. So although we're just focusing here on the, the main methods of selection in Python, we're assuming now that there's a reasonable grounding in the body of skills you learned in level one and then reinforcing those. And that's kind of a pattern that we, we all have moving forward through level three, four, and five in Mission Code or on Time for Code. And of course, as you said right at the start, Harry, you know, inputs and outputs, they're fun. You know, it's great. And it's where everyone starts, hello world, and all the rest of it. But as soon as you do selection, it's the first time your programs can start to seem to behave in a semi-intelligent way because they can now make choices and branch in choices. And that progresses through all the levels we do you know you'll become more confident and they build and you'll reinforce and use the skills from before and it, it just made me smile when I saw that because I thought you had an ASCII art challenge in level one and you know this stuff is really great guys if you haven't seen Mission Encodable yet we're going to do a whole series of these videos as I said we're going to carry on and do level three four and five and if you think Harry's being really quiet I believe the intention is that Harry will lead on uh, talking about level three in our next video and they'll swap backwards and forwards but um yeah, I, I love it, guys. Is there anything else that either of you two want to add on this? Or, or Dave, any other sort of wrap-up comments? Because I think this is brilliant. I think that's more or less all of it, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, absolutely. I, I hope people will really enjoy level two because I said at the start, it's where it starts to get really exciting, in my opinion. And I think, you know, the more that you go up through the levels, the more you'll be able to do, of course, and the more exciting it gets. So if you've already learned if statements, then it's a great reference guide, as we said. You can use the navigation on the left-hand side. And, um, and if you've not looked at them yet, then definitely check out level two, get started. And, and we really hope that you'll enjoy it. Because it's amazing what you can achieve just with a simple select, selection statement. Because, of course, you can have an if inside an if inside an if, you know, which we call nesting. Um, and although there are better ways of achieving those pieces of code in the early days when those are the only commands that you know, you can still achieve a surprising amount. And, you know, the Treasure Island project is a good example of, um, you know, we can even make simple games just with input, output, and if. Uh, and I think that's really good. And your creativity uh, with all this is what Craig and I really, really love. Um, so uh, good job. I'll tell you what, just before we end then, um, Harry, you might as well let everyone know in the next uh, video, we're going to be uh, looking at level three. What um, can people expect from that? Putting you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, um, off the top of my head, level three is all about while loops. So that's where we learn to write code that essentially can be repeated, it's known as iteration. So we run it over and over again. And that's a really nice build on, I think, from doing if statements and um, just allows you to take your programs to that next level, make them more interesting. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in my level three video, I suppose. <laughs> you absolutely will. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, I'm looking forward to see what interesting sort of projects you have in there. Well, thank you very much, both of you. And uh, we'll see you again for another video uh, shortly where we look at Mission Encodables level three. Cheers, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.